Okay, let's work on case problem one. This is module module eight, case problem one, in terms of pages eight dash sixty. Eight dash sixty. First few uh, first few steps you're gonna just fill it in, right? So simple, just fill it in cells, or just calculation in terms of multiplication. So I'm gonna just skip those steps so that we can save some time. So here we go. You need to insert all those numbers and multiply by multiply those two uh, cells in terms of total revenue. Then you're going to do variable costs. One thing you need to be careful, those uh, variable costs must multiply by attendees, number of attendees, which is located in uh, B5, of course. Then you're going to insert those fixed costs, and you have some. Then here we go, B23, you need to be careful, B23 to B25, that's um, same step listed in step 6, 7, 8. So it asks you to insert a VLOOKUP. So it kind of cash question is a little bit tricky because it's not really straightforward what you need to do. So basically we're going to find room costs based on here B23 using this table. Okay. So then depending on number of attendees, the charge will be different. Okay, so that's why we we are using VLOOKUP there. And meal costs, same thing. Here's the given table. So depending on how many attendees, the charge will be different. One thing different is it's going to charge you per person. So you need to multiply by number of attendees. So multiply VLOOKUP by number of attendees. Okay, so that's something you need to be careful right there, okay? Then uh, support costs, just using VLOOKUP, and it will give you a cost based on how many attendees you have. So be careful with this VLOOKUP. That's step six, seven, eight. And if you have any uh, specific questions, let me know. And you're gonna just uh, have a total for those three items, total mixed costs and uh, cost per attendees. So you just add those three different costs and multiply by number of attendees, right? That will give you cost per person. And of course, the balance at the end will be total revenue, which is B7 minus all other costs. Those three costs will be subtracted, okay? That's based on the instructions in step 19, 11. Okay? So you should have ex exactly what I have. Otherwise, you have a problem. All right, let's move on. Step 12. Now we're going to create a one variable data table. So we're going to work on a little bit here so that we give us some constraints for attendees. So G6 will refer to B5 and H6 will is referring to B7 of course which is total revenue, right? And total costs will refer to The sum of those three amounts, because we don't have that one number. So the sum of those three different costs, which is total variable costs, total fixed costs, total mixed costs. Right? So it will give us uh, 84,800. Then balance will, will refer to the B29 at the bottom. Okay, so we got. Uh, set those up. Then we're going to run the number of attendants G7 starting 50 and increment by 50 
or you have this take and add a 50 so that it increase up to 500 attendees. Let's see how this will uh, shape up. So uh, we're going to run one variable data table. Let's see what else we need to do. OK, so we're going to run it just like that. Highlight those area, data tab, what if analysis, data table, column in Purcell will be B5, which is number of attendees. So that it will give us following results, right? Depending on how many attendees, at 50, you'll, the balance will be negative until it reaches 150, you got some positive balance. So that's the one, uh, one variable data table. Then step 13, we're going to create a uh, chart based on this break-even analysis. So we're going to highlight G5 to I16, right? All right, insert, according to chart, all chart should be XY scatter. And for this, we need to use scatter with straight lines, which is this one. Then click OK. There you go. You just line them up right there, covering oh, where are we just gonna cover? G18, J29, something like that. Let me talk. Then uh, chart title, make sure you have the chart title correct. And change the scale of horizontal axis from 0 to 500. So that's horizontal axis, double click. Axis option, maximum is 500. Increment of how many? Increment of 100, which is given right there in the major, which is OK now. OK, so there you have a chart. Step 14, now we're going to work on this balance analysis at this time. So L6, we're going to refer to B29, and it is the label would be attendees, but it actually refers to the uh, balance, which is B29. That's basically what it says in the first sentence. And then uh, we're going to enter L7 through number of attendees again increased by 50. all the way to 500 so that uh, we can play this and also horizontally in terms of fee it should be 200 300 all the way to 500 okay now with this, we're going to create a two variable data table. Okay, so we need to highlight L6 to P16. Then you're going to use B6 into row input cell, B5 column input cell. So data tab, what if? data table, row will be B6. I think I should have uh, zoomed out a little bit. Or you can type it in, of course, always. Uh, 
let's make sure B6 is row, right? And B5 is column. And there you go. So that will give you results. Right now, there's a lot of negatives. So don't worry about this. We're going to, I mean, the number will be changed as, as we move on. Okay, so that was step 15. Two variable data. And if you just wonder, probably you want to save at major step, you know, as a different name. That's what I do, like uh, problems like this, so that I know where I, where I uh, made a mistake before we move on to the next step. Otherwise, because things will be, the numbers will be changing depending on the uh, exercise, depending on the activity you're going to do. So it's sometimes hard to track with this kind of problem. But anyway, uh, step 16, uh, we're going to create a chart for these two uh, variable data. So there will be L7 to P16. So you're going to highlight like that. Then you take up this guy. So you're going to insert Oops, I think I should have do it again. Insert, then X, Y, scatter, then straight line, click OK. But again, now uh, we don't need this L6, right? So we can take it off L6 from here. So that should be starting L7. Or you can pick it up, you know, individually. I mean, you highlight. Either way it will work. So I'm going to just adjust it just like that. All right. Then chart title. Make sure I insert the chart title as uh, directed. Then change the name of the data series, this, this guy. So we want to change that. How are we going to change it? Oh, that should be under select data. This is a series name, so we're going to change the name as M. The first one is M6, second one, edit N6, third one, O6, and series four becomes P6 according to the instruction. And click OK. So that that label of the series become just like that. That was step 16. Okay. Well, one more thing here, just uh, horizontal axis. Oops, not this one. Horizontal axis for X options, axis options. Maximum it says make it 500. Press Enter. Okay. So. Just a little, little bit of change there. Okay, step 17. Step 17 is a little bit long. So I think I'm going to stop here. Then I'm going to continue with part two. All right?